Hey guys, what we're going to talk about today is finding the rate of change, also known as slope, of a line given a couple coordinates that the line passes through. So we're going to be talking about the formula to do this. Now, really the only two things you need to know to be able to do this is two coordinates on the line. Now you may get those a uh, wealth of different ways. You could have a problem that just gives you two coordinates, says this and that is what the line passes through. You may be given a line on a graph, kind of like the one you see on your screen here, where we can pick out two coordinates that it passes through. Or you may be given a data table where you can choose two lines of the data table to make as coordinates. Now you can choose any coordinates that the line passes through. You'll get the same rate of change regardless. It doesn't actually matter which ones it is. So I'm just going to pick out these right here. So we have this coordinate, uh, which is 1, 6, almost wrote 6 there first, oops. And then our second coordinate here, which looks like 2, 9. So I have my two coordinates. Again, you can choose any two coordinates on the line. Uh, you'll get the same answer regardless. And what you want to do with those coordinates is actually label them. Now, generally in mathematics, anytime you're using coordinates, it's a good idea to label them just like I'm getting ready to do. Label one coordinate as x1, y1, and the other coordinate as x2, y2. This kind of denotes our first point, or what you could consider maybe our starting point, and then the twos represent our ending point, I guess you could say, or our second point. It helps keep our numbers kind of straight in our head and uh, helps it line up with our equation that I'm getting ready to write. So the formula that we want to use for rate of change or slope, depending on what terminology you prefer, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Again, you'll notice it's using these same variables that we just assigned to our points. Uh, you may also hear this as the change in y in the numerator and the change in x in the denominator. I kind of prefer writing it like this. It, it's a lot more clear in my opinion and it uses the variables that we have here. So all we got to do is substitute in what we labeled our points as. So when we see y2 in our equation, we take a look and see, well, what did we label as y2? We said 9, right? So 9 is what we're going to put there. Y1 we labeled as 6. So there we go. And then in the denominator we have x2 minus x1. Well, x2 is 2. x1 is 1. So 2 minus 1. After we substitute all of our values in, we can go ahead and subtract these. 9 minus 6 is 3. 2 minus 1 is 1. And then we can just simplify that fraction. 3 over 1 may as well be written as just plain old simple 3. That's our rate of change, or that's our slope. That is, by definition, the amount of change in y for every one unit change in x. All right, great. Now, I'm going to do a second example in this video. I'm not going to take points from this line again because, well, we'd get the same rate of change there, right? But I'm going to make up my own points, so kind of ignore that this line exists for the time being, I guess. I'm going to pretend, you know, we have a problem that says a line passes through negative 3, 5, and, oh, I don't know, uh, 4, 9. And we want to find its rate of change. Well, just like before, we're going to go ahead and label x1, y1, and then we'll label x2, y2. Now in case you're wondering, it doesn't matter if you label the first one as x2, y2, the second one is x1, y1, it's fine if you flip these, it's just that you have to make sure that you have the ones labeled in the same point and the twos labeled in the same point. So our uh, equation again, or our formula, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's go ahead and start plugging some numbers in. 
So y2, we see that is 9. y1, we have as 5. And then x2, we have 4 minus x1, negative 3. Now this is where things can get a little difficult uh, because we have some negatives involved and we have some subtraction signs with our negatives. It can go a little tough. Now I'm always a proponent of saying anytime you're messing with some negatives, double check yourself on a calculator. No harm in being safe, right? But let's just be mindful of that as we solve it here. So we have 9 minus 5. Well, that gives us 4. And then our denominator is 4 minus negative 3. Well, minus a negative actually means we're adding, right? Those two minus signs combine to form a plus sign. And we, so we have 4 plus 3 under here, or 7. So 4 over 7 is what we get as our rate of change. Now, I know you may be thinking, well, let's just type that in the calculator and let's get a decimal. But... You know, in, in our upper levels of mathematics and kind of our algebra one and above kind of classes, we really start to shy away from using decimals a lot and we stick with fractions as much as possible. The fact of the matter is, if we wrote four over seven as a decimal, there's a bunch of ways you could do it, right? It's a really long decimal. You know, you could round it or you could uh, not round it. You have somebody that might go to the tenths place, somebody else that might go to the thousands place. You know, there's so many different ways to write that number as a decimal that we instead want to say, let's just keep it as a fraction. Let's keep it as four over seven. That says it all, right? Now, if this fraction could simplify, you know, if you had something like 12 over, you know, 12 over eight, and you want to simplify that down to like 3 over 2, by all means, you should do that. You want to write your rate of change or your slope in simplest form, but we do keep it as a fraction if it's not a whole number. All right, if you guys have any questions about that, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.